And your music changes when you're in consecration. Anybody needed him this week? Yes, I need yes, the oil. I need the oil. surgery. Actually, he called me Thursday. Said he had a major surgery where they removed his eyeball out of his sockets. Because they were deteriorating. And I told him I'd be praying for him and I immediately began to pray. And I believe it was on Friday about a finished time call on my cell phone and it was him looking at me with his brand new eyes. board members, and he couldn't see me because he had prosthetic eye, but I was in tears because I just began to think, here is a man that's excited about his pros prosthetic eye, and some of us have eyes, and we never think to praise God for just eyesight. someone next to you and tell them say, I don't really know what your petition might be. Say, but I do know this, is that you and me both, we owe him a praise that says thank you for just being God. standing on your feet. We're getting ready to go into our praise and worship segment of our service. And I want you to reach for God like never before this morning. We're almost midway our fast. We're almost midway our consecration. How many of you sense a shift in your in your households? Come on. In, in your spirits. The Holy Spirit told me, Myron, Whenever you're in my presence, don't stop blessing me until I tell you to quit. I'm reminded of the story of the king who went to visit, Elijah went to visit the king and he told him to strike the ground, struck the ground. The 
prophet got angry with him because he only struck the ground three times and he told him, you know, because you struck him three times, that's the, that's, that's, that's the only victory you're going to have. And I asked, why did he get upset with him? He said, because anytime you're in the presence of power, tell somebody, say, anytime you're in the presence of power, you should continue to press until you feel a release in your spirit. I feel a pressing in the room this morning. Come on. I feel a pressing in the room. So this morning, while we're worshiping God, I want you to forget about everything that can cloud your mind up. And the old folks used to say, get your mind on Jesus. We're going to have a time. Tell somebody, tell them, get your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Come on, with our minds on Jesus, we ought to bless his holy name right there. Come on, chosen vessel. Is he worthy this morning? I said, is he worthy this morning? Has he done anything for you? I'm in that same vein as Dr. Myron this morning. I'm reminded of a song. Of this. What? A friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. What do we have to do? Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace. We often forfeit, we give it up. And oh, what pain we choose to bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I don't know about you, but I came to lay some things at his feet this morning. I don't know about you, but during this time of consecration, I've decided to give it up to the Lord. If you have something like that, you ought to lift your hands and remind yourself, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs, he's got to bear. What a privilege to care. Everything to God in prayer. You've got to think about this next part. It says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Ah, oh, what joy we and pain we choose to bear. Our problems, our worries, our children, our finances, we don't carry everything. everything. We got to take it to the Lord in prayer. Now, if you come to take everything to Jesus, you ought to lift your voices right here and say, God, I'm giving it up to you. God, you have all power. God, you have all dominion. You must take control. We come to lift you up. You've got to rise in this place. Come on, chosen vessel, lift up your voices. Lift up your voices right here. Come on, right here. Put your hands together. If you come to bless the Lord and you want to see his glory rise among us, you ought to put your hands together. Praises of our King, rise among us, let it rise. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. We're all together singing, oh. here everybody cry oh, 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 oh let it rise come on right 
Grab somebody by the hand. Grab them by the hand quickly. Grab somebody by the hand quickly. Grab them by the hand. You don't know what they had to go through to get here today. Hallelujah. You don't know how the enemy has tried to fight them all week long to keep them from walking into the sanctuary. But somebody came in here with a mentality and a mindset that I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And I'm going to enter into his courts with praise. Is there anybody other than me that came to bless the name of the Lord this morning? Grab somebody by the hand. Quickly squeeze that hand. The hand that you're squeezing is the hand of a survivor. The hand that you're squeezing is the hand of an overcomer. The hand that you're squeezing is a man that hand that went through and been through. But most importantly, they made it through. Squeeze that hand real tight and tell them, say, I'm still here by the grace of God. Oh, somebody ain't talking to nobody. I said, squeeze it one more time and tell them, say, I'm still here. And it's by God's grace. It's by God's mercy. I, I should have been consumed. I, I should have been destroyed. I, I should have fell apart. But his grace. Father, we thank you this morning. We honor you. Lord God, y'all help me pray. We give him praise today. We thank you for assembling us together for such a time as this. God, we recognize that we're not here because of our goodness, nor is it because of our kindness, Lord God. But we're here because of your grace and because of your mercy. The reality is, is that the enemy should have taken us out. The reality is, is that the enemy should have destroyed us. But thanks be to God that your blood still covers and that your blood still works. And God, right now in the name of Jesus, we stand in a position of victory. Understanding, Lord God, that there is not one weapon that is going to be formed against us that's going to prosper, not not one word that rises up against us in judgment every last one of them are going to be condemned so right now God I pray that you would keep ministering to our hearts and to our minds Lord God that you would build us up where we're torn down that you would encourage us when we find a place of discouragement that you would be moved by your spirit even now Lord God walk up and down each and every aisle Lord God hit each and every pew sit on each and every person hit each and every seat don't allow them to leave here the same way they came into the doors but unctionize and encourage them even now strengthen them through your power strengthen them through your Holy Spirit God right now if there's somebody in the house that does not know you Lord God don't allow them to leave here the same way they came into these doors but allow there to be a change that takes place Lord God disrupt them upset them don't allow them to remain comfortable in their sinful nature but Lord God calls them to have a mentality and a mindset to say what must I do to be saved Lord God right now in the name of Jesus I speak to every foul spirit every demonic spirit every demonic satanic foe that's trying to come in and create conflict in this house Satan the Lord rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus I declare and decree victory I declare and decree overcomers I declare and decree that we shall be the head and we shall not be the tail we're going to be above only we're never going to be beneath right now God do it do it do it do it, do it. and we thank you and we'll give you praise honor and glory both now and forevermore in Jesus name we pray somebody clap your hands and give God praise right now I said clap those hands and give him praise if you would. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've gotten up this morning to rejoice. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord once more. And again, I'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I'm going to enter his courts with praise. I'm going to say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Y'all didn't catch that. I will. That means it makes no difference what's going on in my life. 
I made a commitment that I will rejoice because he has made me glad. Is anybody glad in the house today? Listen, they're still coming in, but I would that if you would for a few moments, all of our first time visitors, if you're visiting us for the first time, I would that you would stand and remain standing. All of our first time visitors, stand and remain standing. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Remain standing for a few moments. All first time visitors, our, our ushers are in the aisles even as we speak and they're passing out a, a particular card that we would that you would fill out and, and put it in the collection plate along with a very liberal offering. There's so many ministries that you could have went to today and I'm just so grateful to God that you decided to come and hang out with us today. I'm Bishop Marvin Sapp. I'm the senior pastor of the Chosen Vessel Church here in Fort Worth, Texas. And I just want to let you know how much we appreciate, honor, adore, and love the fact that you are here. If you are a member or even if you are a consistent visitor and you are sitting next to one of our first time visitors, why don't you get up and hug them, make them feel special. Tell them how glad we are to have them here. Hug them and tell them, say we're so grateful that you decided to be with us. But not only that, why don't everybody get up and go hug on somebody while we sing this simple song of welcome to you. Hug somebody. Go to somebody, everybody. Love all of them now. so very grateful that you decided to come and be with us this morning uh, if you have a white Mercedes Benz an E 400 white Mercedes Benz E 400 your tags are KTW 6844 KTW 6844 you have parked in a fire lane you parked in a fire lane um, if you would uh, get up and go move your vehicle quickly uh, because we don't want to uh, have it removed uh, for you. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't want you to lose the victory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I can't believe they towed my car. I can't believe that you parked illegally. You said, Amen. So I want to make sure that you definitely go get your car tags again. It's a white Mercedes E400. Uh, KTW 6844, you're parked in the fire lane. We're going to ask that you would move as quickly as possible. And even if uh, one of our, our uh, uh, brothers, if you could, uh, if it's a lady, uh, if y'all could, take her keys and just go move it for her. Amen. Amen. Is that, is that her right there? Uh, wait a minute. One of, one of the brothers is going to take care of it for you. You just let them lead them to your car and they'll drive it and move it and that way uh you can still come back in and worship him amen chivalry still isn't dead i can't get no help here amen. again want to welcome each and every one of you that are watching via streaming as well as all of you who are in the sanctuary we thank god for each and every one of you we've already welcomed our visitors but we also have um texas senator Roy royce west Texas Senator Royce Rest. Uh, he is with us today, and uh, he is going to be running for United States Senator this year. Amen. And we also have State Representative uh, Nicole Collier, who was along with him. Y'all come up here for a minute, if you could. Amen. Uh, as they come, come on, y'all can do better than that. Uh, they are representatives. 
Amen. Amen. Um, I, I, my, 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 my spiel is, is very simple. I'm, I'm, I don't tell people who to vote for, but I do tell y'all, you have to vote. Amen. It's, it's imperatively important um, that we go to the polls. Um, and let me help you real fast. Um, it is important that we go to the polls, not just for the president. Amen. Amen. But it's important that we go to the polls for local and state uh, purposes. Because to be perfectly honest with you, those are the things that affect us the most, affect us the most. Amen. So make sure um, that you are a registered voter, that you go to the polls uh, when they have the polls open. Find out where your poll station is, where you vote at. Find out where they are and make sure that you vote, vote, vote. You can't complain if you don't vote. And let me help you. Stop saying that my vote don't matter. The reality is, is that your vote does matter. So I'm through with that, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let them have something to say quickly, and then after they get through saying what they have to say quickly, after I get them through talking quickly, quickly, then we're gonna move forward. God bless you, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much, Bishop Sapp. Message received, yes sir, giving honor to God my Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, my comforter. Uh, bring you greetings from First St. John, uh, Bishop Spears is my pastor. I'm here visiting with uh, Senator Royce West. And uh, Bishop Sapp, you're absolutely right. We've got to make sure that we get out and vote. The primaries are coming up, and I want to let you know who I support. I am uh, your state representative for House District 95, where you are located. I'm so happy to be visiting with the Chosen Vessel. I support, and my choice, is Royce West for United States Senate. And let me tell you why. He's fair, he's a proven leader, he's experienced, and he's loyal. And he gets things done. And so I'm asking you to join me and support him for the March primary that's coming up. And let me tell you, you can vote anywhere in Tarrant County. If you live in Tarrant County, you can vote anywhere. Just find a polling location, you can vote anywhere. If you live in Dallas County, you can vote anywhere. The good thing about him running for the United States Senate is you can live in Texas and vote anywhere in Texas. So if you live in Texas, you can vote for Senator West just like I'm going to vote. And so thank you so much in allowing us to be here today, uh, Bishop Sapp, and we just enjoying our visits around the state of Texas. And, and thank you, and God bless, God bless Fort Worth, God bless Texas, and God bless the Chosen Vessel. Now, Chosen Vessel, I don't want you to think bad of me, but give me just one second. do that. <laughs> Bishop Sam, members of the congregation, I bring you greetings to my church, Good Street Baptist Church in Dallas. I am Royce West, and I'm running for the United States Senate. You're right, an African-American man who's ready as the audacity to run. How many of you have your cell phones with you? Cell phones? Cell phones. Raise your raise, hand. Raise, 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 raise. Go to Royce, R-O-Y-C-E, West, W-E-S-T, dot com. Go to RoyceWest.com, and you can find out about my background. Bishop Sapp, let me just take one second. If you want to deal with issues concerning criminal justice, we have a lot of instances where parents know that their kids are leaving home. We give them that lesson and tell them, especially if they're driving, to make certain that you come back home. We talk about the relationship between our community and police departments, but we're not talking about our community. Yeah, Here's the deal. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired about our children dying in our community. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of it. We have got to do something about it. We can't sit up and tell the police department to do something about it when we are shooting into apartments and killing one-year-old kids. It's not the police department that's shooting at high school football games and basketball games and killing our kids. It's, it's our children in our community that's doing that. Not the kids here. 
Some of them may end up being victims. So I'd ask, as your state senator, not as a candidate for United States Senator, help us find a way to stop this madness within our own community. We've got to stop it. We've got to stop it. And it's got to start in our churches finding solutions to these problems. And so I'd ask you, when you go on that website, or if you go on my Senate website, if you have some recommendations on how we go about doing it, let's make certain that we clean up the mess in our own community. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Make sure you go to the polls. Make sure that you vote. And we at the Chosen Vessel Church are doing as much as possible in order to ensure and to make sure that the youth that come here, that they're being ministered to, that they're being fed. Amen. So uh, we have our youth church that's available. Our youth church is available, um, but we start at age six. We start at age six. So if your baby is six or above and you want to get them into youth church, you got to sign them in. But, but they are definitely, definitely available um, for youth church. Also, also announcements, we are in our Holy Consecration Conference for the month of January. And it's amazing. We've been averaging between 200 and 300 people uh, that call in on prayer every day during the week. So I'm excited about that. Amen. I, I know it's been kind of windy in your house this week. If uh, you've been on the fast, I can't get no help here. Amen. You ain't, you ain't got to say amen. Just, just make sure you had some tums before you walked into the church today. Amen. So, so we know it's been kind of windy in some of you all's homes. So I need to make sure that you understand that this week we're still fasting. 21 days of fasting will continue. The details of the fast in the lobby and on the website. 6 a.m. prayer again. Um, it's on uh, the information at the website as well as in the lobby. Uh, service tomorrow evening. We have services tomorrow evening. They start at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Uh, I'm not a long church service kind of person. So uh, if we get here at 7, the preacher will be up by 7.30. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I'm by myself. Amen. Amen. I, I, I like going home too. Amen. I can't get no help here. So we're going to have the preacher up by 7.30, but we have services tomorrow. And then next Sunday, Sunday through Tuesday, we have guest speaker, none other than Pastor Shalandria Taylor, who's going to be with us. Um, the security team ministry meeting will follow after service today. It's imperative and important uh, that you all, all current security and, and medical response team members, and those who are interested in joining this ministry uh, will meet in Lady R's Cafe. So I want to make sure you all are there. Again, G412, uh, Youth Ministry, um, I want you to remind you not to forget the items uh, that are needed for our youth ministry. You can go to Amazon gift list or you can get monetary donations through Givelify. We have a link through Givelify that we can identify exactly where that money is supposed to go. But more information on the website or just see one of the G412 staff. Uh, my goodness. Um, touch somebody say February the 21st. Tell somebody else February the 21st. I'm doing a live recording here for my brand new CD that's going to be on, it's going to be on the RCA Inspiration Verity record label. And I'm really excited uh, about doing my live recording here. Uh, usually, Every live recording I've done, with the exception of one, has been in Grand Rapids, where I was born and raised. Uh, I did one at my home church. I did two at another church in the city. And then I went out and did one in Washington, D.C. And I said, what a better way of kind of introducing myself, other than introducing myself in the world, in the, in the, in the realm of, of, of preaching, than to bring what I do, the totality of what I do, um, to my local church. Amen, amen, amen. So I'm really excited about doing this live recording. It's going to take place here on February the 21st. It's going to be at 7 p.m. It is a free event. Uh, however, 
However, because of our limited space, you're going to need to get a ticket. So the way you're going to be able to get a ticket is that you uh, must go to uh, a link that will be on the website. And uh, the ticket's at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. It goes live. But you're going to get two tickets uh, per person. So, you know, don't think you're going to be able to go in there and get your whole family. I'm just going to block out 25 seats. That's not how we're doing in this piece, you see? So you need to make sure uh, when you go on there, we've already put the governor on you, amen, to limit you from getting as many tickets as you want to get. Uh, so make sure that you go tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. It goes live, and once the tickets are gone, they are gone. So I'm telling, I'm telling y'all first. Now, I know folks are watching us on streaming, but I'm telling y'all first so that y'all will know uh, set your alarm tomorrow. You're already going to be up for prayer. Amen. Okay, I can't get no help. You're already going to be up for prayer. Uh, so make sure that you go and get your tickets tomorrow. We have a special announcement from our Young Adult Ministry Connects. Amen. Where are they at? Come on up here so y'all can make this announcement. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. You stand over there like you in the cut. Oh. It's y'all announcement. You can't be in the cut. And everybody, I would like to cordially invite you on behalf of the Connects Young Adult Ministry. All young adults, we're having our first session in our life class called Life in Love, taking place on February the 8th. From 10 a.m. until 12 noon. But it is imperative that each of you go to the link on the screen right there and RSVP because we will be serving brunch courtesy of the Chosen Vessel Culinary Ministry. Shout, Shout out, out to them. them. So we want to ensure that we have enough food for all of our guests. This is going to be a great time of fellowship and fun and just talking about being young and navigating through life in love, out of love, just love. <laughs> and unlike Pastor Marvin, our RSVPs are unlimited. So invite your friends. Get them all in there. You can do 10 seats at once. We'll Can't wait to see you guys. I, I think some shade was kind of thrown at the bishop this morning. That's all right. I ain't going to take it personal. I ain't going to take it personal. I ain't going to take it personal. Trust me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Y'all know what time it is? Let me try one more time. Y'all know what time it is? I, our ushers are in the aisles even as we speak. If you need an envelope, want to get your hand held up really high. I want to make sure that you're able to see it and to sow. Um, we are literally in our 46th week of our financial challenge. And if we're in our 46th week of financial challenge, what does that mean? $46. So all of us need to see it and sow $46. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you all. I, I, I begin to share. How many of y'all were at Vision Tuesday? How many of y'all was at Vision Tuesday? Amen. Vision Tuesday, we begin to share with you all some of the things that we are planning on doing as it pertains to the direction in which we're taking the church. But one of the things I majorly discussed is I discussed how I hate debt. I hate debt. I, I, I despise debt. And the reason why I despise it is because of the simple fact that debt, debt hinders you from doing effective ministry. It hinders you from doing effective ministry. The things that we want to do, we are unable to do them simply because we have some debt that we need to get rid of. And I've come up with a plan, family, a plan where we can eliminate the debt of this church in five years. It's quiet in this place. I've come up with a plan that we can eliminate the debt in five years. And I'm going to be talking about it our corporate giving Sunday. I'm going to be challenging individuals to seed and to sow. Uh, if we all do this, I'm, I'm a strong believer in pledging. I do, but I believe in cash on the table. It's quiet in this church this morning. And so we're going to be challenging at least 750 of our members to seed and sow at three different tiers. And we're going to let you know now that you need to plan your giving. It's going to take place. I was going to do it on Easter Sunday. I don't think that's a good Sunday to do it. So it's going to take place in the month of May. It's going to take place in the month of May. We're going to show you all how it is that we're going to be able to eliminate the debt of this church. We have approximately $2.7 million in debt, and that's not a whole lot of money. 
I used to think $2.7 million was a whole lot of money. It's not a whole lot of money. And we're going to be able to eliminate this debt and have a surplus in five years. Amen. All by myself. Amen. So 750 members of our church, we're going to challenge 250 to give 1,000, another 250 to give 500, another 250 to give $250. We're going to explain it to you all one Sunday coming up real soon. We're going to put it on the board, and we're going to allow you to see what we're going to be able to do as a group of believers, as a community of believers as a community of believers. I'm a just very strong believer uh, that the liberal soul is the one that's going to be made fat. Amen. The Bible says that he gives seed to the sower. Amen. He says, if I give, he'll give it back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. We are a tithe-believing church. God is quiet. I can't get no help. I'm not above this. I say it all the time. I'm not above this, but I don't believe not one pig should have to give his life for the sake of ministry. We shouldn't have to barbecue him and baptize him in, in barbecue sauce. I can't get no help here. And sell him on the corner. I don't believe one chicken should have to give up his life for the sake of ministry. I, I don't believe it. I, I, now, understand, I'm not above it. I, I'll, I'll sell every chicken on the planet if I got to to take care of God's house. I'll, I'll baptize every pig I can find. I can't get no help here. I, I, I don't believe not one cow should have to give his life for the sake of ministry. But I'm not above it. But I believe that we have a group of individuals in this house today that understand the importance of the tithe. I'm, I'm, I've learned, and I'm not telling you all this based upon uh, anything other than personal experience. The things that God has allowed me to accomplish has absolutely nothing to do with the song. I say it all the time. The stuff that God has allowed me to have has nothing to do with never would have made it. It has nothing to do with the best in me. I wrote those songs 15 years ago. Those royalties been gone. It's quiet up in here. So, so those things, the things I'm able to get now has nothing to do with that. It's because God trusts me to manage what he has given me. Because you do understand, and I'm going to talk about this in February because I'm not preaching again until February. I'm going to talk about us understanding that nothing that we have belongs to us. But that everything that God gives us, it's our responsibility to manage. Touch somebody, tell them, say, I'm not an owner. I'm just a manager. Some of y'all still looking at me. I said, touch your neighbor and tell them, I am not an owner. I'm just a manager. In other words, God gives me to manage. And based on my management abilities, that, what, that is what determines if he gives me more or not. I can't get no help here. If I manage properly, he'll give me more to manage. If I don't manage properly, he's going to take it away and give it to somebody else. Y'all do, do know about the talents. Am I right about it? We'll talk about it in February. I ain't going to talk about it right now. The whole series on it. So I want you all to understand that you have to give in order to get. Now, our visitors, uh, if you're here today, I'm going to challenge all of our visitors. This is your first time coming to hang and kick it with us. We appreciate you being here, but I ask all the visitors all the time that if you all can make a sacrifice and give a $20 seed, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you all can sacrifice and give a $20 seed. Now, y'all know how we give around here. Let's stand to our feet. Y'all know what we do. We stand to our feet, and what do we do, y'all? We wave our seed. And the reason why we wave our seed is because we're waving away debt and waving in increase. Everybody should be standing. The reason why we wave our seed because we're getting the attention of the master. We're telling him that we don't give grudgingly nor of necessity, but with cheerful givers, we honor him with the fruit of our labor because he's honored us with the activity of our limbs. We honor him with the fruit of our labor because he's honored us with the ability to inhale and exhale. This is not a debt we owe, but it is a seed we sow. We seed in the good ground. 
believing that God's going to give us back some 30, some 60, some 100, and even some 1,000 fold return for the seed that we're about to plant into the kingdom of God. Most importantly, family, we give this seed an assignment. Its assignment is to go into our futures, to create avenues and streams of wealth and increase where we may not live off of what we make, but we're going to live off of the overflow of that which we sow. Somebody holler, I'm expecting a harvest. It's going to rain in my life. And from this seed, I declare and decree that I shall never, I will never be broke, not another day in my life. Somebody holler, hallelujah. Now, there are multiple ways that you can give. You can give via Giftify. You can give via Cash App at Cash Sign TCBC Ministries. You can text to give, family. Y'all can get ready. You can text to give at 833-948-1987. Or you can give via cash or check. But if you're giving via check, just make sure that your check is saved, sanctified, and filled in the bank. Hallelujah. If you're in the balcony, we're going to serve you all in the balcony. Everyone on the main floor we walk. If you would turn to this wall, this direction, facing this direction, we're going to put you in the hands, if you will, of the ushers of our church and the music ministry of Chosen Vessel under the direction of Dr. Myron Williams. And it's not a dead wheel, not a dead wheel but a sea.
Touch somebody next to you and tell them it's already done. That was the wrong person. Some electricity should have went down the line. And reach over that person and get somebody else to tell them it's already done. Already done. It's already done. Clap your hands, Joe. You're going to lift up your hands right here. Let's say it again, Bishop Squire. I'm holding, break me down right here. I'm holding. I'm holding back to the promise. For all God has spoken. All God has spoken to me. He promised. He promised me. If I believe. If I believe. I can move the mountain. I can move the mountain. Where can you push it, Joe? Don't you know? Don't you know? I believe what he said.
Try A flat today. You have long for sweet peace and for favor to increase. You have earnestly purposely pray. But you cannot find rest, yes, nor be perfectly blessed until the altar is laid. Is your Your heart does the spirit control. 
preaching time. It's, it's, it's preaching time in the house. And uh, I just, I love hymns. And we don't sing them as much in the church anymore. And uh, this old man on the organ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. I told him, I said, I'm going to just start throwing some, some old hymns at you just to see. And uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I am so very honored. I'm so very honored to have this, this, this young man to be with us on today to take time out of his very busy schedule. He's one of the most sought after preachers now in the country and pastoring two very wonderful churches, one in East Chicago, Indiana, and the other one is in Indianapolis, Indiana. And he's just doing a phenomenal job. And when I called him, he was one of the first ones that I said I wanted to bring in the revival setting. You know, we don't do revivals too much anymore. Amen. But how many of you all know that God's bringing revival to the church? <laughs> the old mothers used to say it something like this, get your buckets out, children. Because it's going to rain. And I don't know if you came with the spirit of expectation. Uh, I, I got up this morning early at 6 a.m. and I put a demand on God. I said, I don't know what he's going to preach. I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know, God, that you're going to show up. And the reason why I know you're going to show up, because this church understands that we're not the audience. That we the show that he's the audience, and if we show out, he'll show up. 
So prayerfully you are sitting with expectation and that you'll push the preacher and make him preach everything out of him today so that we can drop him off at the hotel. He'll sleep till tomorrow morning. Get up and then come back here on tomorrow evening. I'm sorry, let me rephrase. Our services uh, are at 7.30, not at 7 p.m. They're at 7.30. So we'll be here at 7.30 tomorrow. I keep forgetting y'all got traffic around here. So we got to make sure that you get here in time. But we're not going to be late. So make sure you get here. But I'm so very honored. I met him some 20 plus years ago. I was preaching in East Chicago. And uh, I don't even know. Were you preaching at that point? I don't think so. He was just there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I was just so great. And you never know when you come across people how you're going to engage or interact with them again. So, so it's always good to be nice. I can't get no help by myself. I don't, I don't, I, I promise you, I don't have to read a resume. I don't have to share nothing about this boy. I mean, this young man. Because once he gets through preaching today, you will know exactly who he is. Put your hands together for Bishop Brandon Jacobs as he comes in his own way. God bless you. God keep you. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus, everybody. Oh, come on, you can do better than that if the Lord's been any kind of good to you. You ought to show some sign by giving God a high praise all over this place. Come on, help me look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can be key today if you want to. But tell them I need too much from God to sit in this sanctuary and not have a praise of expectation of what God's getting ready to do. If you know he's getting ready to blow your mind, somebody wave your hand. Somebody open your mouth. And somebody give him glory. Because he's getting ready to do it. Woo! I am a host. Oh, come on in here, chosen. Open your mouth and give him glory. Hi, Kaya. Even my son of the Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey. glory. Hey, I want you to prophesy to your neighbor right now and say, hey neighbor, your eye haven't seen, nor have your ear heard what God's getting ready to do in this place. If they looking at you like you're cute, you sit next to the wrong neighbor. They don't have no expectation. Find you another neighbor and say, hey neighbor, your eye haven't seen and your ear haven't heard. What God getting ready to do in this place. If they still looking at you like you're cute, look at the one behind you. Say, I can't deal with nobody next to me. Let me try those behind me. Say, hey, neighbor. Your eye haven't seen and your ear haven't heard what God getting ready to do in this place. If you believe it, throw your hands up and holler. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Listen, I know we prayed, but do me a favor and uh, just grab a neighbor, grab their hand. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that prayer births revival. I believe that when you get some praying people on one accord, something happens in a place. And when those people got expectation, something happens in a place squeeze that hand like you know God's getting ready to do something hallelujah yeah I hear expectation all in this sanctuary without no music without nothing I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray for that hand come on come on let me hear it come on open your mouth like you're not ashamed start praying for that person next to you if you feel like they may not know the Lord, pray that they get to know him before we leave here. If you feel in the spirit they need a miracle, pray they get that miracle before they leave here. Ah, I just believe that God is able to blow somebody's mind in church. Hey, he's going to mend that marriage. He's going to fix that child. He's going to heal that body. I pray right now that God will dry up cancer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, Father, we thank you in here. We praise you, oh God, because we know that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly way above all we can ask or think. So now, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you and God will move in this place. We pray that you would shake in this place. We pray that you would deliver in this place. Have your way in here, God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, that witchcraft can't move in this atmosphere. We thank you that warlocks can't move in this atmosphere. We thank you that the demonic, oh God, cannot be lifted in this atmosphere. But God, we thank you that the faith is so strong, that the anointing is so strong, that your power is so strong, that God, something's getting ready to happen in this house. Oh God, where we're going to leave this place knowing that we didn't just see a preacher and we didn't just hear songs, but God, we had an experience with you and we saw your glory. We saw your glory. We saw your glory. Yes, Lord. Let your glory be here. Let your anointing be here. Let your anointing be all in the atmosphere and all up and down the pews and sit on every row and sit on every chair. Let your anointing be here where minds are changed and eyes are open in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, have your way in here. Oh God, have your way in here. Oh God, have your way in here. We're expecting a move. We're expecting a move. We're expecting a move. So now God, while I'm holding this hand, I squeeze power in this hand. I squeeze the anointing in this hand. I squeeze breakthrough in this hand. I squeeze a shift in this hand. I squeeze favor in this hand. I squeeze a turnaround in this hand. I squeeze grace in this hand. I squeeze the anointing. I squeeze the anointing. I squeeze the anointing. I squeeze the anointing. Have your way, God. And we thank you for it. And we praise you for it. And we adore you for it. Now loose those hands. Open your mouth. And give him glory like it's already done. Young men in your shot. Hallelujah. Hey. 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 Glory. 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 We thank you for it and we call it done. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. All those in agreement said, Amen. Uh, while you're standing and you're getting your Bibles, I'm going to be in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. But I am just so honored to be here. Uh, as your pastor already told you, uh, I met him years ago. Just a young preacher who loved preaching and admired his ministry. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I don't know what you all know about your pastor, but I really believe that he's one of the most humble, anointed men I've ever met. Um, I saw him at the, at the uh, he was preaching for Reverend Dr. J.C. Wade Jr. And um, we were there and we met and, you know, being an aspiring preacher, they let me come meet the pastor and shake his hand and all that good stuff. And not many years after that, I started my ministry and had ran into him a few more times, and he never changed. Even after his ministry just grew and grew and grew, and he never changed. He never changed. To the point that I was uh, at a TD Jakes conference. I always share the story. I don't even know if he remembers it, but we were there, and uh, I was a nobody, young boy preacher, just started pastoring, and uh, he walks in and everybody's oh. he coming down the hallway we get ready get something to eat and if you have ever been to a Bishop T.D. Jakes conference you know everything just packed can't get in nowhere and here come Bishop Marvin sat down the hallway and everybody oh God da, da, da. and I'm like I know him but me being who I was, he meets so many people, surely he doesn't remember who I am. He comes in and he says, he's Chicago. I said, yeah. 
And uh, he said, come with me. Me? <laughs> Boy, come on. <laughs> Paid for my food. Blessed me and went on about his way. That made my year. You understand? For someone who you don't talk to every day, you meet them a few times to remember who you are, see something in you, sow a seed in your life. And keep, you know, you know we, they don't have those kind of people no more. You, know. you make these great albums and do all this awesome stuff. They move on and they may even know who you are, but act like they don't know who you are. Like, all right, let's go. You, you understand. An anointed, humble man like that deserves all that God has in store. Somebody ought to say something. I think you all ought to help me honor the pastor of this church, the visionary. I want to make a whole lot of noise for Bishop Mark Seth. Come on. That's what I want to do. Thank God for you. I thank God for you. Uh, to, to Bishop Younger, his beautiful wife. God bless you. Uh, I'm a PAW boy, so I've been seeing them and knowing them from a distance. It's good to be here. Amen? First Kings 17, verses 1 through 7, when you found it signified by saying Jesus. Bible reads like this, says, And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew, no rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Corinth that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. And he went and dwelt by the brook of Corinth that is before Jordan. <clears throat> and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. I want to talk from the subject uh, this afternoon, uh, dirty birds in a ditch. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, every now and again, God will send you some dirty birds and a ditch. You can have your seats. got to have a faith that believe God come hell oh I want to talk to some faith people here you you've got to have a faith that that denies and defies the doctor's report you've got to have the type of faith that no matter how your child might be acting you still believe God 
You got to have the type of faith that though your husband may be out there running amok, something in you says, hallelujah, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things. Oh, I may not see it with my physical eyes, but in my spirit, I see God getting ready to do something that's getting ready to blow my mind. Oh, you ought to help me prophesy to somebody around you and tell a neighbor, I see what you cannot see. Tell him, I know what you may not know. Tell him, my faith says things are getting ready to turn. My faith says things are getting ready to be different. My faith says God's getting ready to do something that I ain't never seen before. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. I don't know who he's going to use to do it. But what I do know is he does all things. Oh, I wish I had a church here. You ought to open your mouth and praise him because you know he does all things well. He may not come when you. And my faith says God's going to work it out on my behalf. You, you must understand, my brothers and sisters, that scripture teaches us of five levels of faith. There's five levels of faith. There's no faith. There's little faith. There's a measure of faith. There is great faith. And then scripture tells us about the gift of faith. Repeat after me. There's no faith. Little faith. Measure of faith. Great faith. And the gift of faith. If you're going to have any type of relationship with God, then you must have faith. If you want to turn God on, then you need to believe in him. you got to depend on him. My brothers and sisters, you got to take God at his word. Let me suggest to you that, that the gift of faith or faith all by itself is just like air. It is not beneficial to you unless you breathe it in and breathe it out. It is just like bread. It is not beneficial to you just sitting there on the table. If you want bread to bless you, you got to eat it. Uh, in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that you can say you have faith all day long. But if you don't put faith in action, then you're just talking a whole lot of nonsense. But my Bible says that faith without works is dead. If faith without works is dead, then that shows me that faith is like a muscle. Ah, the more you exercise it, ah, come on here, you begin to grow from no faith to little faith to a measure of faith to a gift of faith to great faith. You, you got to put your faith in it. And let me tell you, we always shout about faith. We always talk about how much faith we have until life puts us in a bad place where we have to exercise our faith. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you don't know whether or not you have little faith or great faith until you've been put in a place where the doctor has given you a bad report and now you have to exercise oh god in other words what i'm trying to tell you is in order for your faith to grow your faith needs a good fight <laughs> Oh, who am I preaching to in here? My brothers and sisters, your faith, it needs a good fight. Your faith needs some good tension. That's why the Bible says to fight the fight of faith. It's the good fight. I heard you, woman of God, help me preach in here today. Uh, the faith fight is a good fight. It's, it's not a bad fight. It is a fight that's maturing you. It's a fight that's growing you. It's a fight that's taking you to another level. So if you're in a situation right now that you feel a little uncomfortable and you have to put your faith into action, it's only because God's trying to mature your faith to 
to another place in him ah, I know you're fighting with it I know you're fighting in that marriage I know you're fighting at that job and you really want to leave and you really want to walk off and I know you're fighting to mature your credit and you're fighting to make sure that you keep your mind I want to tell somebody here uh, just keep that fight just keep on fighting until something in you begins to change and when it feels like you're getting weak in the fight I come to tell you don't worry about it just go and pick up your Bible and begin to gain some faith about what you're going through for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God if the doctor told you you were sick go and build your faith and tell yourself but he was wounded for my transgressions and he was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his 39 stripes I am tell yourself that healing is the children's bread if you're in a fight and it looked like something around you is happening and you're trying to believe God to save your child remind yourself if God can save Saul and change Saul's name to Paul surely your child selling drugs is a small thing for God if you're fighting because it looked like you got enemies all around you you better eat some faith food and tell yourself no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper in every tongue that's my favorite part all y'all with these talking tongues uh, all of you with something to say behind my back every tongue that rise up against me in judgment God said I'll condemn if your change is strange uh, and your money is funny remind yourself my God shall Look at somebody say, my faith is growing. My, my faith, my faith, my, my faith, my faith is growing. This is why, amen, my brothers and sisters, hallelujah, you got to increase your faith in God. So I want to tell you, in this 2020 perfect vision year, where God is getting ready to build your vision, I want to tell you, get ready for a good fight. Yeah. It's a, it's a good fight. It's a good fight. It's a growing fight. Get, get ready. Get ready. But can I tell you, can I give you some good news about that fight? The battle is not yours. <laughs> See, faith says, just stand there for steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works and the word of God. I want you to know that you might be in the fight, but you have to be faithful to the stand. Uh, this is why my brothers and sisters that real faith in God starts off at the point of being faithful to God if you want to find someone with little faith in God just look at how faithful they are to the Lord I always tell people you want to know how saved someone is uh -uh, don't look at how, how they shout -uh. Uh -uh. you want to see how saved somebody is don't look at how they eat that behind the behold mm -mm. hallelujah you want to find how saved somebody is uh, hallelujah don't look at how they pray because we all got our famous father in the name of you no 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 don't be moved by that if you want to see how saved somebody is watch how they go through hell the way somebody suffers will show you how saved they are the way somebody goes through pain will show you how saved they are the way somebody goes through hell will show you how faithful they are if they left the church you better pray if they start cussing you better pray if they start raising Cain in the house of God you better pray because it shows you that that tongue talking was a phony hallelujah to God all that shall you only gotta like me here it was a phony because if you're faithful to something you're not just faithful when it's good you are faithful when it's bad you are faithful when it's a struggle you are faithful when you want to quit I'm not faithful hallelujah because I've been so good but I'm faithful because the Lord's been so good to me and real faith at the core is settled in your faithfulness brothers and sisters and we see in that text a prime example of faith in God in comparison with faithfulness to God we find it in the prophet Elijah 
Elijah is a prophet that comes out of nowhere. I love the text because if you have a message Bible, I like how the message Bible paints, or paints the picture. Uh, it, it shows us uh, uh, Jezebel and Ahab uh, uh, just, just totally turning their back on God. And then the message Bible says, and then this happened. Elijah came. Uh, we don't know his mother. We don't know his father. We don't know his cousins. We don't know where he, he, he came from. I, I know I know that it says Elijah, a Tishbite of Gilead. But when you really study that, you'll understand uh, that a Tishbite really has no existence. Some believe that it means a resident of Gilead. Or some believe that it suggests, hallelujah, that uh, he was one. Uh, uh, that, that they just tried to give a place that we could have some type of of knowing or some type of connection with where he comes from but when you look at him it looks and it seems as if that this Elijah is a stranger hallelujah he's a stranger in a strange land amongst strangers this Elijah just shows up on the scene so abruptly there's no grand introduction to who he is he just shows up one theologian says he shows up like a tempest and leaves like a whirlwind in other words my brothers and sisters we don't know how he got here and there's no record of him dying all we know is he was caught up good God here hallelujah to God he was caught up amen to be with the Lord and the Bible says that when they caught him up he didn't just leave but he dropped something when he left here there's a mantle amen that fell off of Elijah and fell on Elisha my brothers and sisters Elijah amen he is a true prophet he is one that prophesied according to the word of the Lord my brothers and sisters I do need you to know that when the enemy is busy when Satan is on the rise when Satan is looking for destruction I need you to know you don't need to worry because God always has a voice oh yeah yeah he always has a voice he always has someone that shows up and speaks to the turmoil that's going on he he always has someone that shows up and brings order where there is chaos and then this happened Bishop Marvin Sapp showed up and then this happened the prophet shows up on the scene and when he shows up the Bible says he does what they don't like to do they don't like you to come and wreck shop they don't like you to come and put order when he shows up he says Jezebel and Ahab because you've been out of order there shall be no rain Let me suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, anytime you become unfaithful to God and have idolatry in your heart, God will shut up the rain in your life. Elaman so they turn their back on God and he says you want to turn your back on me there shall be no rain I know I'm not going to get no amens here amen man of God but I do want to tell somebody that could it be the reason you're struggling is because you got too many idols in your life hallelujah I knew it it's all right I'm still coming I need you to know that, that it, it may not be that you're in fornication it may not be hallelujah that you're getting drunk every week it may not be that you rolling blunts and smoking weed uh, but you may have too many idols uh, maybe Gucci has become an idol maybe Prada has become an idol maybe Facebook has become an idol maybe Instagram has become an idol maybe that boo that you prayed for has become an idol that's why you don't come to church like you used to come to church that's why we on a fast and you ain't fasting because you got too many idols you got too many things in your life that's taking precedence over God and sometimes God says I'll shut up the rain until you understand that I am God every blessing you got you didn't get it because your job has been so good all the favor in your life you didn't get it because your family has been so good until you recognize everything I got God gave me my right mind God gave me my peace God gave me the money in my pocket God gave me and when you forget it he'll take it to remind what you got came because the 
Bible says he shut up the rain. Now they're mad, Bishop, at the prophet. They're angry because this prophet then came and then set up shop. Ah, but I like God. I like God. I like God. I like God because all of Israel, according to the text, including Ahab and Jezebel, are angry with the prophet. But God sustains the prophet in the secret place. That's my first point in here, and I'm getting out your way. God says, let, let me help somebody. Let me tell you, stand for what is right all the time. Because when the world turns their back on you, God always sustains you. I, I don't know who needs to hear that. I need to tell it to somebody. And I know I was sent for somebody because I don't even know how I got here, Bishop. As you all know, every plane out of Chicago got canceled yesterday. And even when I got on the plane, we got on the runway and the pilot turned around and said, we ain't going to make it to Dallas. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I texted the bishop and said, Bishop, it looked like I ain't coming. But when we got off the plane, one of the people who were working for the airlines asked my musician, is that Bishop Jacobs? He said, yes. He said, y'all still need to go to Dallas? We said, yes. He called and said, hold the plane. I got somebody on assignment. Ran us down there. They held the plane. Got me, got me on the plane. That's how I got here. And I don't know why the Lord put me on that plane. But somebody in here needs to know that if you stand for right, Y'all gonna make me preach in here. If you stand for what is... You ought to find about three people to say, neighbor, you can do wrong if you want to. You can be unholy if you want to. You can do what you want if you want to. But I still believe. Hallelujah, Romans 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your... Somebody want to throw your head back and give God a holler? I come down to the answer. God sustained the prophet because of his righteousness in a secret place. I don't know who you sit next to, but help me preach and tell your neighbor there's a secret place waiting on you. <laughs> oh, yes, there's a secret place waiting on you. They turn their back on you at your job, but there's a secret place waiting on you. They try to destroy you every way they could, but there's a secret peace that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the earth. There's a secret place. He tells the prophet, he says, go to the brook of Corinth. The word Corinth in the Hebrew means a cutout place. Well, watch me now. A place of separation. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wadi or, or a tournament, uh, which, which is a hole in the ground. God let it rain long enough to fill the cutout place. In a place that nobody knew about. He, 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 let a, he let enough water get in a hole in the ground. That, that no, but if you really study the place, it's covered by bushes and trees. and It's covered by all type of craziness. But he put fresh water in a secret place that nobody else could now. Snakes wasn't in the water. Alligator. I just believe if God prepared that place for him, I just believe wasn't no snakes in there. Wasn't no lizards in there. Wasn't no bears around there. Wolves couldn't get there. God prepared a place. He said, prophet, if you do what I tell you to do, I'll prepare you a place. I'll prepare you some substance. I'll prepare tell you what is right. I want to talk to somebody where well, you're afraid of your next step. You're afraid of where to go. Your faith is a little shaky and I come back to tell you, you better believe God and you better walk by faith huh? and not by the crowd. You better walk by faith and what God said because somewhere there's a there's a ditch. 
Uh, look, look at somebody say, Amy, if you're looking for me, I'm in my ditch. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord will provide a ditch for you. Uh, my brothers and sisters, the king was looking for him. Jezebel was looking for him. Hallelujah. But God made him secret provisions in a ditch. A ditch? God, yes, a ditch. What you talking about? All you need, I can put it in a dirty ditch. You worried about where you are, but all the time you've been there, I've been making a way for you. My brothers and sisters, you can live amongst people who are in lack, but God will yet sustain you with a ditch. Everybody else is struggling, and God to sustain you with a ditch they'll ask you where did you get that from God how did you buy that God how did you pay that bill God how are your children in private school God my God shall supply Lord I just need an old school church my God shall supply my God shall supply my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches he'll put riches in a ditch he'll put money in a ditch he'll put breakthrough in a ditch he'll put another level in a ditch somebody ought to wave your hand and holler thank you for my thing you gotta in the ghetto you got a ditch in the projects you got a ditch in that corner but you better thank God I ain't never went hungry I ain't never been without I ain't never struggled but in my ditch Oh, I feel a breakthrough coming in here. Stand up behind. How you enemy? You gonna quit complaining about your one bedroom apartment? You gonna quit complaining about where you live at? They could be shooting all around you, but they ain't coming to your house. Hallelujah to God. They can be doing crazy all around you, but it ain't coming to your house because the. Now, now, my brothers and sisters, God thought this process of sustenance through when it came to Elijah. He knew the prophet would stand up for righteousness. He prepared the secret place for him. But I got a discrepancy with the text. You thought about the cutout ditch. I'm cool with it, Lord. Thank you for my cutout place. We put a hole in the ground, put fresh water in the ground. Ain't no snakes in the, in the, in the water. Ain't no lizards, ain't no alligators. Ain't no catfish swimming in there. But ravens go. You thought this thing out? I mean, I know you're God. And I know you're smart. You created the world in seven days. I mean, come on. Mother ravens. Ravens. Now, now, I, my discrepancy is because uh, when Hagar and Ishmael, who was out of the will of God, when she messed around with the man of God, the text says in Genesis 16, 7, you allowed, you allowed an angel to cover her, and she was in sin with God's man. And here I am, your prophet. 
you give her an angel and you send me wings. In John chapter 6, with the people who was following after Jesus, and we know their heart is not right because the end of the text says that they all left him after he fed them. You allow a little boy with some fish and some bread. Good old catfish dinner. I just think it was fried. I don't know. It was probably fried. <laughs> with some Hawaiian bread. Do y'all have that up here, Hawaiian bread? Mm, shut up, my high. Watch it now. Now, how you going to give them fried fish and Hawaiian bread? Not for two, or oh, y'all can't eat. <laughs> and here they were out of order, and you send me. God has a way of offending you and blessing you at the same time. I'm my enemy, oh shy. Help me, help me. I'm almost done here. Help me prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God will sustain you from unlikely sources. God instructs the ravens. The text says, God instructs. He gives the ravens instructions. According uh, to Leviticus, the 11th chapter, uh, verses 13 through 19, the raven is an abominable bird. Ravens consume anything. They are scavengers. They feed off of trash and dead things. Ravens neglect their own children. But God instructs ravens. I had to do my homework. I had to. I had to to figure out God. Why would you send ravens? You could have sent an eagle. I mean, don't the eagle represent glory or something? You know? Watch me now. R ravens, ravens were mean, but ravens were also very smart. Ravens are very watchful. Uh, they, they had to travel a distance to find food because their beaks are not strong enough to break the flesh of meat. Uh, uh, but what ravens would do, because their beaks were weak, in order to find meat, ravens, they'll begin to fly across. And what they do is, while they're flying across, they would find the weakest link. They would find an animal who was by itself. And they would begin to go back to where they saw lions, tigers, and bears, and wolves. And they'll begin to quack. The reason ravens represent death it's because anytime you hear them quacking, it either means something is dead or something's getting ready to die. So they would quack and they would fly. And the lions and the bears and the wolves, they would look above and they would follow where the ravens would lead them. Our God. And the ravens would lead them to where the prey was. And it is in that place where the lions would tear the flesh of that animal. They would eat it. They would tear the flesh. And when they tear the flesh of that animal, then the ravens would begin to try to fool the lion. And they would go down in a swarm. And they'll begin to quack and quack and quack. And the lion didn't know whether someone was coming to attack them or what was getting ready to happen. So they would back up. Let the ravens get their portion. Oh, God, Jesus here. Oh, God. Yo, I hope I make it through this because I'm getting excited because I know where I'm going. My brothers and sisters, in other words, what God was telling me is that what would normally seek to destroy you, uh, through the provision of a raven uh, God is getting ready to provide for you God is getting ready to use people who would normally attack harm and take from you good God here uh, to feed you now 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 now, now, now listen uh, I, I gotta make more sense of this uh, because uh, in any other sense uh, lions would have found Elijah where he was so the job of the raven was twofold number one is to lead you away from Elijah <laughs> and 
to lead you to where food is. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got some real messy people in your life. But tell them in this season, God's getting ready to allow them messy ravens to distract mess away from you. Oh, God. And to take it in another direction. But not only are they going to distract mess away from you, what they're also going to do is while they're over there being messy, God's going to allow messy, mean, cantankerous folk get ready to provide your need. Oh, God, you only talk. That's why you can't get mad at folk who don't like you. The type of God I serve, I make your hateful self pay all my bills. The type of God I serve, I make your messy self come and buy me dinner. The type of God I serve, I make your messy self turn around and bless me. Because in this season, God's getting ready to provide for me from unlikely sources. Let me see if I can make this plainer. My grandmother, my grandmother worked with the youth ministry all my life. And my granny was like one of them bold sanctified women of God that kind of scared me. And one day we pulled up on the church and all these thugs was right there at the front of the door, music booming, getting high. And my granny pulled up hadn't turned the car off good and said, get off of God's property with all that foolishness. And I said in the car, I should have got out. <laughs> Granny, get in this, Granny, get in this car. As they were packing their stuff up, getting ready to leave, the young man blessed me. He said, Mother Jacobs, you don't remember me. He said, but I used to be in the choir about 15 years ago. Then my mother died, and I had to move with my father. He said, when I got the chance to come back to East Chicago, he said, I bought the same house that my mother lived in across the street from the church. He said, and I know that you come to this church early and you leave late. He said, and every night you come, come outside and watch you to your car to be sure that nobody hurts you. He said, Mother, I want you to know I respect you. He said, one day you will leave in the church with the money back in your hand. And they had plotted to steal from you. They probably would have killed you. But I was watching you from a distance. And you probably didn't even hear me say it, but when they were running up on you, I said, hey! And out of respect for me, good God, they left you alone. God, I feel God here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you ever heard God say, he'll keep you from danger seen and dangers unseen? Tell them, neighbor, that's because you got some ravens. You might not like what they wear. You might not like where they come from. They may be mean, nasty, and cantankerous. But tell them what you don't know is the way you made it through this storm. It's because you had some ravens. Oh, God, here. What are you doing, Bishop? I'm asking God, send me the ravens. Send me the raven. Who am I preaching to in here? Somebody ought to wave your hand and just say, God, send me my raven. Send me the people that ain't supposed to bless me, but they're going to bless me still. If you don't mind the day, I need you to do me a favor and grab your name. Grab your neighbor, grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I want to prophesy to you and I want to tell you to get ready, neighbor, because the way God's going to bless you is getting ready to blow your mind. Tell them the way God going to bless you is getting ready to cause you to go crazy. Tell them the way God going to bless you, he's going to send you 
30 birds and a ditch. He'll send you water where there is no rain. He'll send you ravens when other folk ain't eating. Don't be mad in this season because the stingy are getting ready to bless you. The folk who don't like you are getting ready to bless you. The folk who dogged you out are getting ready to bless you. The folk who want you dead are getting ready to bless you because my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory I don't know tonight who I'm preaching to but I stop but to tell you you can't quit here you can't throw in the town here you can't call it over here because God he's getting ready he's getting ready He's getting ready to bless you like never before. If you know we're going to do it, you want to open your mouth. You want to wave your hand. You want to tell God, send me the ravens. Send me the ravens. Send me the ravens. Send them from the north. Send them from the south. Send them from the east. Send them from the west. Send me the raven. Is there anybody here? You want God to bless you? Well, I stop but to tell you. And he going to do it for you. Quit pushing away the people who may not like you. Because them same jokers who ran your name in the ground. God, he's getting ready to make them bless you. Because your eyes haven't seen your ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered in your heart what God, he's getting ready. 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 He's getting ready to do it in your life. If you know we're going to do it, say, ah. Send me the raven. 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 You want to find fine people and say, hey, neighbor, the ravens are coming. The ravens are coming. The ravens are coming. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Tell them, get ready, neighbor. The ravens are coming. They're going to pay your car note. They're going to fix your credit. They're going to put food on your table. Come on, ravens. I know you don't me. But the God I serve, I make my enemies be. I be my footstool. Please, please do me a favor and say, hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Thank God for your enemies Cause the more you have The higher you go Every round Goes higher and higher Since I lay My burden down If you know your blessing coming From unlikely sources Say ah Send me the rain. Up above my head. I see ravens. I see ravens. I see ravens. I see ravens coming. Come on, ravens. Come on, ravens. Come on, ravens. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the church. Come on, ravens. Come. He's getting ready to blow your mind. You're looking at me. You're saying, Bishop, you don't understand. I've been crying here. I've been weeping here. 
I've been going through here. But if I was in Chicago, the old preachers would tell you, don't you worry about what you've been going through. Go to bed tonight. Pull the covers up above your head. Because we've been might endure for the night. But grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, it'll be all. be over. Your tears will be over. Your heartache will be over. Your suffering will be over. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. Send me the rain. Send me the rain. someone say neighbor God is getting ready to bless you from unlikely sources don't you do that man of God all them folk that talked about you all them folk that ran your name in the mud all them folk who said you'd never be nothing God say get ready because payback is coming. I'm sending ravens with a mouth full. A mouth full of glory. A mouth full of money. Y'all ain't talking. God. In this year, don't charge God foolishly for the dirty birds and the ditches. Because it's those ditches and those dirty birds. Come on, I see a dirty bird, here it come. Here it come, here it come. But when they come, they're not coming empty handed. Did you hear me? They're not coming empty handed. They're coming with your stuff. And I want you to get your neighbor by the hand, grab him quickly, grab him. Say neighbor. I'm grabbing your hand because I want to make sure that when they come, you're not full of yourself. What you can't receive. Look at them and tell them they owe you. Oh, come on. Come on. Keep that hand. Tell them they owe you. And you better not be too prideful to get your stuff. Say, man, I call my hand. Lord, I feel victory getting ready to come in this place. I feel victory getting ready to come in this place. I feel victory getting Say, neighbor, when they come, you won't know this is your season of victory. But say prophetically, neighbor, I'm grabbing your hand to yank you into your season of overflow. I'm yanking you in your season of more than enough. I'm yanking you in your season. Well, the dirty birds are coming by the droves. The dirty birds are coming by the droves. And say, neighbor, when I yank you, I need you to praise God with everything you got. Because here come the dirty birds. Are you ready, neighbor? Jesus, yank that joker. Come on, yank that neighbor. Say, come on, neighbor. We're going with the victory. 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 You need to praise him. 
Because what God get ready to do for you is get ready to blow your natural. touchy type of preacher. I'm sorry. Look at somebody say, neighbor, God's getting ready to change your testimony because of the dirty birds that's getting ready to come. Tell them your new testimony is simply this. Listen, I can't help it that I'm blessed. I can't help it that I'm blessed. I can't help it that that's going to be your new testimony.
Play it for me, Christian. Oh, tell us, God will supply all oh, that. Let me hear you, lady. Tell us. I can't hear you, lady. Everything I want. Lift your hands and declare it. Listen. 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 The ditch was a prepared place. Hear me, church. The ditch was a prepared place. It was a cut out in the ground. I want to challenge everybody in this place to do what I call a covenant seed. A $20 seed. I want you to put it in the ground. Ten is for the ditch and the other ten is for the dirty birds. I'm sowing that every dirty bird will come my way. Meet me every hour, every hour, every hour. Get there quickly. Everybody, everybody. I'm not going to do something I'm not telling you to do. Move quickly. Fill this aisle. Let it go to the back. A $10 seed. Am I all right? $20, I'm sorry. $20 seed. 20 Get in the aisle. Because God's getting ready to supply your need. Move quickly. Some of y'all need to do this because you're unlocking every dirty bird in your life. Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Matter of fact, let me do this. Let me obey the Lord. Everybody just meet me at this altar. Come to this altar. Even if you're up there, come to this altar. Come to this altar. Move quickly. 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 Send the ravens. Matter of fact, while you're moving, I want you to declare that. Lord, send my ravens. Send them. Send them. You know what this text helped me to do? It helped me to stop complaining about those who don't like me. I start thanking God for them. There goes another dirty bird is what I say. <laughs> That's another dirty bird. But after a while, you're going to have to fill your mouth with my substance. Sing it. God will be all I know some of you all have given already, but put that seed in your right hand and lift it high. Lift it high. Put it in your right hand as you're coming. Let me talk to you. Put it in your right hand. Lift it high from all over. If you're coming, I'll wait on you. Lift it high. Matter of fact, while you're coming, put it in your... The right hand is the hand of agreement. The right hand is the hand of covenant. 
The reason we need so much faith, man of God, is because, Lord, how do I handle those folk that are against me? How do I still believe you and folks on my job trying to make me lose it? How am I supposed to believe you and the doctor report with the doctor's not getting any better? How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to keep believing you? And my child is still wearing, my marriage is still crazy. How am I supposed to believe you? And my family's a wreck. Cousins, aunties, uncles, everybody. Hallelujah. But this covenant seed today is to thank you because I realize you're just preparing ravens. They'll fight the lions for me. And if they won't fight them, they'll distract them. Then God, I'm sowing because I know that even though I'm going through, you're just digging a ditch and preparing a secret place just for me. And a prepared people who are getting ready to bless my socks off. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now open your mouth and give him a Shabbat all over this. Ha! So you see, sow it, sow it, sow it, throw it on the altar. Listen, I don't want anybody moving quickly. Just hold your seat for a moment. By here, close your eyes. Come on, son. It's all right. All this word that's been deposited into this place today. Somebody needs to be transformed. Old things need to pass away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Quickly, we're over time. If you're here today, Bishop, I'm not saved. I'm here today. Haven't been baptized in water. Haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or I'm here today and I had a relationship and I walked away. I want you to know that he's married to the backslider. You may have walked away from him. But he's never walked away from you. He is literally standing with his arms stretched wide, ready to receive you just as you are. If you're here today, as quickly as possible, and you're saying, Bishop Marvin, I'm not saved, or I'm in a condition backslidden, and I need to get back in right relationship, I just need you just to get up out your seat and come down to this altar. I'm going to grab you. I'm going to meet you wherever you are. You don't have to leave here the same way you came into these doors. God wants to change you. He wants to save you. Can I, can, can I drop a bomb on you real quick? 
We were all dirty birds. Our lives were in a, a mess. But he had to come along and do something for us that no one else could do. There's some mothers that need to come quickly. Come on. I need you to witness to the person sitting to your right or to your left. Look at them and smile. Some of y'all ain't smiled the entire service. Smile at somebody. Say, neighbor, are you born again? Say, if you're not born again, you don't have to leave here the same way you came into these doors. But tell them, say, neighbor, you can leave here changed. Tell them, say, if you do not want to walk to the front by yourself, I will walk with you to the front. Ask them, say, neighbor, do you want to go? If they say they want to come, I need you to bring them right now. If they say they want to come, I need you to bring them right now. If they say they want to come, I need you to bring them right now. Come on. They're still coming. I see them coming from the balcony. Come on, y'all need to give God praise as they come. Come on, family. Let's give God some glory as they come. Y'all can clap better than that. We're going to let everybody go in a few minutes. I see them coming. I see them coming. That's it. That's it. They're coming. 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 Y'all ain't happy. I wish somebody would give God praise as souls come to the altar. Hallelujah. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Come on. Let's give God glory as they come. Y'all can do better than that. He's changing lives. He's changing lives. He's changing lives. He's changing lives. Listen. Greatest decision you can ever make. Greatest thing. Stay saying that for me, son. Tell me. Greatest decision you can ever make. See that man of God right there. I need y'all to turn that direction. Go with them. Go with him. He's going to take you to a place. Follow, follow, follow. Go, sis. Go, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Go. They still coming. I still see them coming. I still see them coming. They still coming. Y'all ain't happy. They're still coming. I see them coming. They still coming. Come on, give God praise, y'all, as they come. Y'all ain't happy, they still coming. They're still coming. Families are coming. They're still coming. Y'all ain't happy. Come on, give God praise as they come. Last plea, last plea. Listen, I'm already saved. I'm looking for a Christ-centered ministry that I can connect to. I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna keep you, I'm gonna keep it 100. If you're looking for a perfect church, you'll never find it. And the reason why you'll never find it is because the church is filled with dirty birds. It's filled with people with issues, struggles, and problems. So there's no perfect place here on earth. But if you're looking for a church where you can be cemented into, growing the knowledge of who God is in your life, God knows I'd love to be your pastor. I'd love to give you the tools that are necessary in order to build your faith, man. As we get prepared to leave, if you want to be a member of Chosen Vessel, and you say, I got it together already, Bishop, I'm just looking for a church home. I, I, get up right now and come, will it see you just as you are? Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on as they come. They're still coming. They're still coming. Y'all ain't happy. I wish somebody would give God praise as they come. Amen. Hallelujah. They're still coming. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. They're still coming. See, that's why I like. She's like, shoot, I don't need to touch the past. I'm gone. I'm, I, I've been waiting for this a long time. I'm coming. She said, she just left a preacher. Amen. We're so very happy. Are y'all, are y'all, okay, don't, don't play. Don't stand over there in the corner too long now. We are so happy to have y'all be a part of our family. We are, ain't we happy, y'all? You ready? You ready now? Oh, you good. See, see that man that got over there? The one that you ran past me to go get to? They're going to take you to a place, share some things with you. Come on, clap your hands, give God praise, family. Let's stand up and prepare to go. Let's stand up and prepare to go. My God, y'all got to come back tomorrow night. Oh, my goodness. Did this man preach or did he preach? Yee!
Brandon, something wrong with you, man. A dirty, <laughs> a ditch and some dirty birds. Baby, how God is about to sustain you from some unfamiliar sources. That's all I heard. I didn't hear the rest. I, I didn't need to hear nothing else. How God is about to sustain me from some unfamiliar sources. How God is going to take the wealth of the wicked. I feel like running, but I'm going to save it for Tuesday. He's going to take the wealth of the wicked. He's going to lay it up for the chest. I'm, I'm, I have a different custom during revival season. I usually don't do the, the, the benediction because I don't want this flow to close out. So I just do the benediction on Tuesday. Amen. So y'all can just leave now. And I'll see y'all tomorrow night at 730. Amen. I don't want this flow to stop. Ain't closing this out. Yeah. Lord, I thank you. Okay.